What is up, YouTube? It's Psychedelic Scizor, and I am here with my Week 4 battle, the CPC D-League Season 3 versus Crypto and the Amityville Ampharos. Uh, if you did not check out my team builder, please do that. But in case you're not going to anyway, uh, you are a bad listener, and I brought E-Belt Lando, Spadef Jirachi, Mixed Defensive Mega Venusaur, Spadef Umbreon, Scarf Keldeo, and... Quiver Dance Roost Rabambi. Now, um, most of what Crypto brought is what I expected. The first four, I was sure they were coming. Um, Megalodios, Infernape, and Rosary definitely were coming. Um, Clefable was, I'd still say, pretty likely to come, um, just for my fighting types, but... Maybe not as guaranteed. Swampert, I was a little surprised to see. Um, I guess it's able to take on Keldeo a little better than Glyscore is, but I did expect Glyscore to come, uh, just because I think it did really well versus my team. But Swampert can still fill the same roles and uh, is not as weak to to water. Uh, and I suppose it probably takes Stone Edges better than Glyscore does, um, but. And I was really thrown off by the Electrode bring, but, uh, so at this point, looking at the team preview, I did assume Electrode was going to be Scarf, uh, just, um, because as I said in my team builder, I thought if it came, it was going to be Scarf in order to, uh, be able to revenge kill Scarf Keldeo, plus one Urbambi, stuff along those lines. I don't know if it could outspeed a plus two Lando. Um, I didn't check that. I don't know. Obviously, we're not going to find out because I'm not a rock polish variant, but uh, either way, let's get into the game. Now, I am going to lead off my Venusaur as he leads off with the Roserade, and I let off with Venusaur because I feel like it put me in the best position overall if he led with Infernape uh, or Electrode. If he led with uh, any of his momentum users there, um, or with Swampert, because I think first half his team, I was in a very good spot if he let off with those, although I did want to lead off with Jirachi, because I still thought the Rose Raid was a pretty solid lead because of Spikes, but I just lost so much momentum then if, um, he let off with Infernape, and I wasn't Mega Evolved yet, so I couldn't switch into Infernape, so that was pretty bad, um, this isn't horrible, though, because I can't do a ridiculous amount of Rose Raid, but Rose Raid can't really do all that much to me either, but it will be able to set up spikes. <sighs> so that's a thing, and I'm tired. Uh, so he is going to set the spikes. As you see, I am going to go for the Sludge Bomb, just to kind of gauge what kind of damage this is. This is a fairly bulky Rose Raid, uh, but not max bulk. I did um, switch into Jirachi here, and it covered, I think it covered him, uh, it covered a lot of things. It covered him switching into Lottie, like he just did now. It covered if he went for another spike, because it would be a free switch into Jirachi, or um, it was, and another reason I did that was to scout for Hidden Power, in case it was something like Hidden Power Psychic or something along those lines. Um, that would have been good knowledge to have, and I still don't know for sure, although, again, I'm pretty confident it doesn't have it, because I'd assume it would want to hit Lando if it has a hidden power at all. It might just be, like, dual stab spike synthesis, something like that, or sleep powder. Um, but we're in a good spot here. We do catch Megalotti here, and so I believe I am just going to go for my rocks here, because hazards are going to be because I'm trying to, at this point, I'm probably going to win with Scarf Keldeo, so I want to get my hazards up and start wearing stuff down as fast as I can, and that is a safe switch into Swampert for him, and that is going to force me into, actually, I'm going to go into my Rabombi, hoping to tank the Earthquake or catch him on the Stealth Rock, uh, but this gives me a free Quiver Dance as he actually switches out into Infernape, and right here is where I was kind of beating myself up a little bit, because right before the battle, um, I changed it from Fairy MZ to Buggy MZ, and I'm 
beat myself up right now because Ferium Z would have given me a guaranteed knockout on this Infernape, where Bugium Z is not going to do that and regular Moonblast is not going to do that. Um, and also, it would give me a lot better damage versus Clefable, uh, but that's just kind of a shame. I believe I go for the Moonblast here. Yeah, he's going to switch his Infernape out because I still had a roll. I still had a chance to knock out with Moonblast. So, um, after taking that damage, I was really pissed. Because um, after seeing that damage and seeing him take rocks, that's unaware Clefable. That is not Magic Guard. This set would be able to 1v1 Magic Guard Clefable fine. This doesn't do shit to unaware Clefable. And this is where the Fairy MZ was important because... If I was Fairy MZ, I would be able to knock it out this turn with the Twinkle Tackle, but the uh, Savage Spin Out is not going to be able to pick up the knockout at all. So I'm going to be forced out here, and when I come back in, I'm going to be about 50% from Hazards, and that's going to be annoying. But um, it's he's just going to get a free Moonlight off as I go into Mega Venusaur. I don't think he was going to do anything ridiculous and predict that. He's probably just going to be safe, keep it healthy. And he is going to go right back into Lottie, as I do click the Roar here, expecting that, and just start phasing stuff. Back into the Swampert, which is good for me, because he doesn't know that I don't have a Grass move. I actually go for Sludge Bomb here, and get the Poison, as he reveals the Mirror Coat. And I did talk to Crypto after the battle, I found out his set, he was Rindo Berry Mirror Coat and would have definitely lived a Giga Drain from that range and would have just straight up knocked me out. So in a sense, I'm kind of glad I didn't have the grass move or else I would have just straight up lost my Mega Venusaur here. Uh, and that poison is really nice for wearing this thing down because um, this is going to force me to switch a little bit because it's just an annoying mod for my team. God damn it, I am tired and fighting off the urge to yawn. Um, yeah, uh, kids, you need to actually sleep at night. That's that's what it's for. Um, don't be like me. So, we're in an alright spot here, though. I'm going to be forced to synthesis, though, and he kind of knows that. Um, so, he is going to go then out into Lottie, as I am going to synthesis. But I still have my safe switch into Lottie, so I'm not as concerned about that. I do go out to Umbreon, because that is its only job this game. As he is going to Toxic which is going to then Toxic the Lottie, which I am 100% okay with. I actually prefer this because I don't think I'm going to be able to hit the Lottie as much as it might force a lot of switches from me. So being able to have that Toxic is really nice. And he goes Electrode there, which I found weird. Um, but I am going to switch out into Lando here. And right here, I am going to Defog. I don't know why I paused that, but... I'm going to defog here as he volt switches. Uh, he did predict me to switch out or to be scarfed, one of the two. Um, and so now he's going to hit me with the HP Ice. I'm going to live and I'm going to be able to U-turn out into the Keldeo because I know it is not scarfed now and I'm going to basically pick up a KO here almost. Or no, um, Clefable is still too healthy. I did go for Scald trying to burn it, because it will take burn damage now. Um, but this is a safe switch into Jirachi as he goes for the T-Wave. That's annoying. <sighs> That's very annoying. And we get paralyzed trying to get our rocks up again. That is really annoying, because rocks are so important here. This is just going to be a Lando sack for me, as he actually goes for the Nasty Plot, but at least now I force him to attack me and not set up more, as he uh, goes for the Vacuum Wave, and Keldeo just comes back in, um, and I'm just going to keep firing off Scalds, uh, just to pressure his Clefable, because um, that's his only thing that isn't really 2 hit KO'd at this range. Well, Roserade isn't 2 hit KO'd by Icy Wind either, but it's not that far off. So that's going to give me another switch into Jirachi, hoping to try to get my rocks up again, because those are important. And same switch into Infernape, same paralysis, I still don't get my rocks up. Um, yeah, Jirachi's supposed to be on the other end of that. But uh, 
he is going to catch me on, on the Venusaur Switch with the Inferno Overdrive. That is going to hurt. That's not going to knock me out, but it's definitely going to hurt. Um, and I do sack Rabombi here. This looks weird because it was a full health Rabombi with no hazards. Or just about no health. Or no health, full health. What the fuck am I talking about? But um, at this point, this was the most expendable mon on my team because looking at his team and what I was able to do, uh, Rabombi basically was not going to be able to win as long as uh, Clefable was still around and healthy, and he does not have trouble keeping that thing healthy. Whereas Keldeo, on the other hand, well, that's also checked by Clefable. Keldeo can wear the Clefable down because it can burn it, and it also can just generally do more damage to it once I start clicking Hydro Pump. So I have identified Keldeo as my win con at this point, and I was just so zoned in on having Keldeo win that um, I just didn't have really any other sacks other than Rabombi. Um, and Umbreon I still needed for the Lottie. Uh, Keldeo I still needed for the Wind Condition. Jirachi I still needed for Clefable and for Lottie and for Roserade. Uh, and Mega Venu I still need for the um, Infernape. So, bye bye Rabombi. Um, and it's just another free switch into Keldeo. And I am going to Scald again, uh, just pick up a kill here, his Electrode is going to go down. Um, just a little fun fact about that Electrode, uh, since it went down, something I talked to Crypto about after the battle. The reason he brought um, Electrode is because his Electrode was soundproof, and that would actually end up blocking my Heal Bell on Umbreon if I decided to bring that. And I actually thought that was a really cool tech. I didn't know that soundproof worked like that, I didn't know that Heal Bell, like, attack to the opponent like it could block that but he said he tested it apparently that is what it does it does block the heal bell so that's that's really interesting that was a really cool tech uh it didn't it really end up working because i didn't bring heal bell but you know it pretty much knocked out my lando not you know getting the ko but it you know brought my lando down to like seven percent so it definitely did something for being an electrode and he's gonna go back into lottie that switch is going to force me back into the Umbreon as he goes for the Shadow Ball. It's going to do almost nothing. Um, literally net 2% damage. Um, and this is going to be a free... This is, do I foul play? Yes, I do. And that, with a crit, still does nothing. Um, so I believe at this point I am actually going to Baton Pass out. Yes. Um, as he goes for the Nasty Plot, it's all... My Umbreon is still fully alive, and I go into the Keldeo, so his Infernape is not getting hit off. And here I finally pull the trigger on Icy Wind, but it's actually not going to be able to pick up the 2-hit KO, because that is a bulky Roserade, and that's just a switch in to Jirachi as he gets his spike up again, which is irritating, but manageable, I guess. I don't want to let him get too many though because I don't have my defogger anymore, and I finally get my rocks up on my third try, um, but that definitely affected me not getting them up earlier, that definitely had a big effect. And I just went to Umbreon here because it was, again, the most expendable mon on my team. Um, I was kind of getting to the point where I needed Keldeo to win soon because in this long drawn out battle I'm just not winning this um, Infernape is just gonna beat me down it's been slowly beating me down all game but here here okay i was rambling let me go back here so my plan is here i want to wish with umbreon as the swampert kills me and then i'm going to going to let mega venusaur catch the wish but i had a complete brain fart and i did not remember this count correctly at all that was supposed to kill i forgot that it didn't and so i just lost my mega venusaur for no reason now did it lose me the game i don't really know that for sure i think having another pivot with mega venusaur would have definitely drawn out the game and would have given me a much better shot um but I don't know necessarily how much of an impact either way it made on differential or winning the game or not. Um, so it's not a play that directly lost me the game or anything like that, but it just was kind of irritating. But we now go into Keldeo, hoping that he brings out the Infernape, but he doesn't. He goes into Lottie, 
as I'm going to go into Jirachi as he recovers up. But now that I have my rocks up, I'm just going to keep clicking Ice Punch because um, it hits everything that the that the Keldeo is checked by. And so with the toxic damage, uh, I'm basically going to force this Lottie down to a low amount of health because he just doesn't win that. So I think he has to recover here. So I switch into Keldeo, but he does go for the Shadow Ball and that hurts, but I'm still able to hang on pretty comfortably. And at this point with Hydro Pump, I pick my kill. Everything's weakened enough to the point where Hydro Pump is gonna two hit KO. And so it is going to be an easy two hit KO on the Roserade, as we see even through the back Black Sludge, except when I miss. Um, that is definitely not going to pick the KO there, as I'm knocked out with the Energy Ball. And I am just down to last Mon Jirachi. Uh, you know, Jirachi is not going to be able to um, pull this out here. And again, did that miss lose me in the game? I'm not totally sure. It definitely, again, accelerated the process if I was going to lose. Um, and I still would have had to play, like, I would have had to get every prediction right uh, in order to win. But Keldeo was two hit KOing everything. Um, so that was kind of irritating. Uh, but. I wouldn't even say irritating, just, you know, it was, it was unfortunate, but uh, that was a great game with Crypto. Uh, we take a 3-0 loss here, but uh, me and Crypto talked a lot after the battle. Uh, it was super fun. Both of our teams were really scary for the other. Um, I was, even though I lost, I'm pretty happy with this game. I think I played my Keldeo really well. I think Hax wasn't particularly in my favor. Again, I don't think it was anything really enormous but I'm not I'm also not gonna say that it had no effect it definitely had um, some effect like me trying to get my rocks up earlier I needed that chip damage like every switch in on rocks mattered with uh, Keldeo being to knock stuff out um, and uh, it definitely had some effect but that is taking nothing away from crypto he brought the perfect team for me and it just, he just let the team play how it was designed, and it, you know, there was not a lot I could do about it. So, GG Crypto, uh, that was awesome. So, your Oakland A's Elves are now 2-2 two and two plus 1. It's not a great spot to be in, it's not the worst. Uh, it is going to mean that next week is pretty pivotal as far as where my season's going to go. But uh, we're we're gonna keep moving forward. Um, I'm pretty happy with how I played this game. I don't think I really, other than the Mega Venusaur play, I don't think I made any real misplays. I just think Crypto just brought a great team and he just beat me. So that is all I have to say there. I'm gonna end the video there. If you guys like what the Oakland Elves are doing, make sure you like, subscribe, share, do what you do with the YouTube videos. I'm gonna get on out of here and see you guys later.